County Public Schools Secondary ESOL Newcomer. Welcome, my name is Miss Hansen. I work in the office of ESOL. Let's start working on learning more English. This is lesson number eight. Have a look at today's outcome. Read it to yourself or to somebody near you. So what are we going to do today? That's right, we're going to identify. What are we going to identify? The steps for making drinking water. Hmm. Well, why are we going to identify the steps for making drinking water? In order to write a paragraph describing the process. So we're going to look at how drinking water is made and once we learn how it's made and the different steps, we're going to write a paragraph. Now let's think back to a previous lesson. And if you remember here, we learned that the average person in the USA uses 156 gallons of water a day. That's a lot of water. In Mali, the average person uses three gallons of water a day, which is much less. So in the USA, we generally use about 153 gallons more per day than a person in Mali would use. So in the USA, people get their water through the faucet in their home. In Mali, Many people get their water from the nearest river or stream. In the USA, most people's water is treated water. This means the water is cleaned so that it's safe for people to drink. In Mali, if people get their water from a stream or a river, it is not treated, so it is not always safe to drink so it's not always clean. Cleaning water means that the water has been disinfected. Disinfecting water by using chlorine and other chemicals. Chlorine is a chemical you will find in swimming pools. It's used to keep swimming pools safe and clean to swim in. But also the water that we drink has some chlorine in it usually. Now, if you take a water, a water glass, and you fill it up from your faucet, does that water taste of anything? What does it look like? Can you see anything in it? Or is it clear? What you could do, if your water wasn't very clear, is you could create your own water filter. So here we have coarse gravel, charcoal, fine sand, coarse gravel again, and then water is poured on top of these. So the water filters through each of these levels. It goes through and it becomes clean. It is filtered. But that's not usually how we get our water in the USA. Before we start reading, let's look at eight vocabulary words to make sure we know what they mean. So the first word is disinfect, disinfect. And here are different things that I might use to disinfect my home. Right now, I'm using a lot of Clorox and Lysol to disinfect my home to protect me so I don't get the coronavirus. The next word is coagulants, coagulants. And if you look at the image here, it looks like it's expanding and getting bigger. This is because a clump is forming, just like this, a clump. So chemicals are added to the water, which forms clumps. Coagulants are a type of chemical. Next, we have shaking, shaking. So here we have the puppy shaking his head. Next we have sediments, sediments. And with this glass of water, if it is water, it's not very clean. 
because there are sediments at the bottom and the water does not look clear. Hopefully when you poured a glass of water from your faucet, it did not look like this. So the sediments generally fall to the bottom because they're heavier and larger. Next we have membranes. Membranes. So the green part in this uh, image here is the membrane. And we have the water with the sediments on one side with the impurities. It goes through the membrane and then we have less impurities, less sediment. So it's cleaner when it comes through the membrane. Next we have ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. So the word ultra means very. Violet is a color. And if you look at the image here, you can see bacteria and viruses and then ultraviolet light goes through those and it cleans them. It disinfects ultraviolet. And lastly, we have tanks. This word here is plural because we have an S on the end. In the image, we have the singular. We just have one tank. So water might be put into tanks, large holding chambers, large containers to hold the water. Tanks. Okay, so let's have a look at the steps of water treatment. As I read, follow along. So the first step is usually to add coagulants. These are chemicals that cause those solid bits to clump together. Even if those solids don't hurt you, they could cloud water and give it a funny taste. By making these bits clump, they become bigger and easier to remove. A gentle shaking or spinning of the water, called flocculation, helps those clumps to form. And in the first image here, you can see the water is being shaken. The gentle shake, shaking or spinning of the water, flocculation, is happening. So you can see the clumps forming. Next, the water flows into big tanks where it will sit for a while. During this settling period, the solid sediments begin to fall to the bottom. So we saw the glass with the sediment at the bottom earlier and here in the tank, the solid sediments have fallen to the bottom of the tank. The cleaner water atop then moves through membranes. So here is the membrane. So the water goes through the membrane and like a sieve, they filter out smaller contaminants. Then the water is treated with chemicals or ultraviolet light to kill harmful bacteria and viruses. Following this disinfection step, the water now is ready to flow through pipes to homes throughout the community. So when you turn on your faucet, you will get clean water that went through all of these different steps. On this slide, we have got a paragraph and we need to decide which of the vocabulary words that we looked at earlier could be placed in each of the blank spaces. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blank empty spaces. I'm going to read the paragraph and I want you to think about the words you just learned and which word might fit into the empty blank space. There are several steps that are usually followed in order to blank water and make it ready for drinking. First, 
blank or chemicals are added. These cause solid bits or particles in the water to blank together. The water goes through a spinning or blank process, which helps clumps to form. Then water flows into large blank and just sits. During this time, the solid blank begin to fall to the bottom and stay there. As the cleaner water moves to the top and travels through blank, which filter out the smaller contaminants. After this, the water is treated with either chemicals or blank light in order to kill bacteria and viruses. Once these steps are followed, the water is blank and is ready to flow into pipes and come out of your blank. Okay, so here we have the same paragraph and we have a word bank with 10 words. One of these 10 words will fit in one of the empty spaces. Let me read through the words. Repeat after me as I say them. Clean. Clean. Clump. Clump. Coagulants, coagulants, disinfect, disinfect, faucet, faucet, membranes, membranes, sediments, sediments, shaking, shaking tanks, tanks, ultraviolet, ultraviolet. So let's have a look at the paragraph and you decide which of the words from the word bank would be best to fill the empty spaces. So there are several steps that are usually followed in order to disinfect, good job, water and make it ready for drinking. First, coagulants or chemicals are added. These cause solid bits or particles in the water to clump together. The water goes through a spinning or shaking process which helps clumps to form. Then water flows into large tanks and just sits. During this time, the solid sediments begin to fall to the bottom and stay there. As the cleaner water moves to the top and travels through membranes, which filter out the smaller contaminants. After this, the water is treated with either chemicals or ultraviolet light in order to kill bacteria and viruses. Once these steps are followed, the water is clean and is ready to flow into pipes and come out of your faucet. Great job. So let's return to our outcome from today. So we said that students will be able to identify the steps for making drinking water. Did you do that? Yes, you did. Good job. And why did we need to identify these steps? In order to write a paragraph describing the process. So you just did that using your vocabulary words. Excellent. Good job, everyone. Go and get yourself a nice, clean glass of drinking water that went through all those steps. And I'll see you next time. Bye.